This is Dave from DNA Reptilia, and today we're going to look at our ball pythons a different way. This is a video I actually wanted to make for a long time. Now really, it's an idea that's been in my head for a long time and I finally got something to help me do it. This is a thermal imaging camera that you can attach to your smartphone. I have my old uh, Galaxy S7 Edge, I do believe. Um, it's a micro USB, so I got the micro USB version so that I can connect it to this instead of the um, uh, USB C of my uh, Note 9. The USB C on my Note 9 is not really working so well, so that's another reason why I got the micro USB. Now, you may be wondering what is a thermal imaging camera? Like what you saw in the intro, it gives you a actual photo, video, or photograph of what the thermals actually look like visually. So then you can really see where, take for instance, you can go up to a window, you can see where the cold draft is or where it's hot. Um, you can see if your seal around your refrigerator is leaking. And also you can check your air conditioning system to see where there is uh, leaks in your HVAC in cold spots or hot spots depending on what time of the year it is but today we're gonna look at our ball pythons and their enclosures to see how they actually see their enclosures I have three brands of enclosures I have sea serpent sub-adult racks I have a freedom breeder um, FB70 rack and I also have the Vision hatchling rack. The hatchling rack uses heat cable. People have asked me numerous times, is those two little runs of heat cable going to be enough to actually make the bottom of the tubs warm enough? Well, I'm on season two of uh, Hatching Ball Pythons, and all last year it was doing fine. I still have some of last year's hatchlings still down there that I'm holding back. And I'm curious about the, the Vision V70 tubs, which has the same size heat tape, which is, I do believe, the 4-inch, as my FB40 tubs, that the rack that I made, comparing how large the hotspot actually is. Does it go all the way across or just in the middle? How far from the back? What is the gradient? What visually is the gradient in our ball python tubs? Is it like a super hot spot and then it goes right to cold right away? Or does it get colder the farther you get towards the front? Alright, this is the Aquera Aquia. However, I'll put a link down in the description or put the name up here. But I have a temperature sensor in the snake room. As you can see, it is, well, maybe, 76, 76 degrees in this room right now. So what that should mean is all my cold spots in all the tubs should be at least 76 degrees. Yes, this room is a little warm compared to the rest of the house. It's because I have the vent actually closed a little bit. We will see what it actually looks like in the snake tub now. Guaranteed. All right. So let's get on with this and show you some information visually. There it is. There I am. Automatically loads the program so you don't have to load it. Now I have it set to actually take video. So whatever audio is going to be better depends on if that camera is going to catch it well or if this is going to catch it better. We'll see. Because the FLIR will actually use the microphone to add the audio from me to the video on the phone. We are going to do sea serpent rack that well, the bottom tub is empty there's no snake in it there's also no bedding in it so we're going to open it up directly inside 
76. The hot spots in the back. See, that's where the heat tape was. 93 degrees. You can see exactly the temperature gradient. So it actually drops off pretty quick. I'm probably. Okay. okay, that's where it's the hottest, and then 84 degrees is here. I'd say that's about two inches. Yeah, it's kind of funny, you can see, I can draw with my finger. So it actually drops temperature pretty darn quick. Since Sea Serpent runs up the side on one side, heats up one side. Not the other. Now we'll look at the tub up, which is a blackhead. He's 87 degrees, and his bedding is about 90. 89, 90. You can actually see the gradient of the temperature of the tub. That's a sea serpent tub. All right, next up, we're gonna do the FB40 tubs with the heat tape that I actually put on the back. Um, it's about eight inches, about four or five inches from the back, but I used four inch heat tape, and I only, I only used about 10 inches of it compared, because the bottom of the tub is only 10 inches, so I don't need a whole foot. But um, let's check out this uh, normal pastel girl and uh, see what she looks like in infrared. Where's my hand? There we go. Quite cold. There it goes. See 81 degrees. She's back there. It's almost 81 degrees where she is. She is about 85, 86. Yeah, she's soaking up that heat pretty good. Do a nice shot with gradient. 77. See, it's actually pretty abrupt and it's pretty even the rest of the way through. So there is more or less a hot spot, and that's about it. Just a few inches in front, and it drops down to room temperature. So that's quite interesting. Temperature I set on these tubs, since my thermal couple is actually on the heat tape, I have these tubs set at um, 102, right on underneath the heat tape and the sea serpent racks are set at 101, 102. This is probably one you guys have been wondering quite a bit about. Vision rack. Vision rack, I put this together with the heat cable with one space in between. So it's heat cable, space, heat cable. So pretty sure that would be more than fine for the hatchlings, which since I kind of cheated and I looked, because I was curious myself about this rack, um, let's just say it, it was good results. All right, I have this rack set at 102 degrees also on a heat cable. But right now we're gonna open up this tub. I'm gonna start this camera. We're gonna open up, we gotta find my hand. There we go, my hot hand. There's nothing in here except the tub. Wow, look at that. 92, 93 at the bottom of the tub. Tub's all the way out. You might be able to actually see it in the video. There's about an inch or two of nothing. There's one band, two bands. Yep, right there. Yeah, that's about three inches. 
That's equivalent to about three inches of heat tape. All right, now I'll show you one of the new hashlings, the pastel jigsaw. Right on a hot spot area. On top of the bedding, sitting at about 84 degrees. Calibrated. The side of the tubs are actually kind of warm, which is nice. 85. These actually have good granular, good and granular heat distribution. My thumb is holding the tub right now. See, that's why there's a hot spot on the side. But. Uh, that's nice. Good heat, heat distribution. That's why some of my ball pythons in here like to sit in the middle. This is really gradual. Wow. All right. Do one more. I think this is the pastel. Yeah, this is just the pastel. 80 degrees. Wow. 79. It's cold way up front. Oh. Pastels right there. It's actually warmer back there behind them. So, I hate to say it, but these vision tubs actually, um, uh, the temperature is uh, pretty granulate. That was actually very nice to see. Makes me feel so much better about this rack. Um, I've had it now for over a year, so I probably will be able to give my final opinions on it pretty soon. But next up is the Freedom Breeder FB70 tubs. Now I actually do have one open tub of the FB70s. Uh, the temperature on this rack is set at 103 and the uh, thermal couple is right on uh, the heat tape underneath. We're gonna go for that tub right there. There's nothing in here. Look at that glow. Alright. Oh boy. Looks like someone needs to turn down the temperature. Multiple clutches in here, but wow. I checked that with a thermal gun. With one of those normal um, $15 see if same area does it even show oh it does show a light okay the light there shows 93 degrees oh. see it shows 94 degrees on here which isn't bad but it shows 100 degrees on here right there Okay, showing 93 degrees. Now, that shows you the variance in this. I would technically trust this more than I would trust this. So, someone's going to be turning it down the temperature pretty soon. But yeah, it's an abrupt change in these. Um, we will go with Jackie, our girl that's actually going to be laying soon. She is a big warm ball. She's at 91, 92. Ain't too bad, but right there it's nice and toasty. So you can see she's a big girl. She's fully gravid. She's due any day. But it's an abrupt change. Hmm. These bigger tubs must be harder to get a more granulate um, heat distribution. I mean, yeah, it's colder up here, except where I touched it. It looks hot because it's adjusting. There's, yeah, it's only 78 degrees. Go back here, 70, 89, and her. 
Let's see. Yeah, get some of that in there. I just turned down the temperature of the Freedom Breeder Rack. I mean, I've had clutches come out of here before. No issues. I haven't touched that temperature since last year when I was doing the whole cooling, you know, temperature up and down. I'm not going to play with that anymore. But, um, yeah, I trust the FLIR way more than I trust this guy. This guy was $17. The FLIR that goes onto a smartphone is roughly about $200. Now, if you want to get something like this that is a FLIR, you're talking anywhere from $400 up to $1,000, depending on what you want to get. You know, how often are you going to actually use it? This, I'm going to use around the house, and I can connect it to my smartphone. As you can see, I can actually take videos, didn't take any photos of it because, well, I didn't need to because this is a video. But um, I learned a little bit, and I shared it with you guys. Now we actually know how the, gran the granular heat distribution actually is doing on these types of tub systems. On the narrower tubs, it looks like it's more granular. On the big wider tubs, it's more just a strip. It, it drops off really fast, unless the snake is actually on it then they're actually spreading the heat out even more because, well, they're soaking up the extra heat from the hot spot and then spreading it out. But, um, interesting. Might have to go up into Abby's room next time and um, see what uh, temperatures are in some of her other reptile enclosures. But until then, in order to find out if we actually do it, you must subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'd be really nice if you could share this video, spread the knowledge, and if you could, leave a comment down below and hit that bell no that bell icon over on the side. It helps out quite a bit. But until next time, this is Dave from DNA Reptilia signing out.